You're listening to the British Baseball Podcast. Hello, baseball family, and welcome back to another season of the Wrap Up Show, the around the ground style episode that brings you all the scores and action from across the leagues in all the land. We had our first taste of competitive league baseball take place this weekend in the British Baseball Federation with a return to action for a whole host of old favourites and the appearance of some new teams too. I'll get to those results shortly, but before I do, if you want to come on the show and give a quick one or two minute overview of the action from your club, maybe had a dazzling rookie debut and no hitter, uh, a team or a player um, uh, that reached a milestone, a grand slam to win the game, win or lose, good or bad, I want to know about it so I can share your team stories with the great baseball listening public from across the globe. Just email the show, britishbaseballpodcast at gmail.com or DM me on the social medias at britbaseballpod and we can talk. Opening day of the East of England Baseball League starts up on the 9th of May and sees the return of action of the Milton Keynes Baseball Club, Norwich Iceni, North Ants Baseball and the Essex Redbacks alongside the Cambridge Baseball Club, the Brentwood Stags and the new EEBL franchise, the Harwich Town Bay Area Blues. The rest of the league kicks off their campaigns on the 6th of June with roundups from Scotland, courtesy of Jason and John of Ball Caps and Bagpipes, who will tell us all about how the teams from Aberdeen are doing. That's the Aberdeen Express, Granite City Oilers, and how they fare against the three teams of the nation's capital, the Edinburgh uh, Giants, the Edinburgh Diamonds uh, Devils and the Edinburgh Cannons. And then you have the two teams from Glasgow, the Glasgow Comets and the Glasgow Cal- uh, Galaxy, and not forgetting the newly formed Tayport Breakers. The West Midlands Baseball League featuring the newly rebranded Birmingham Metalheads alongside the Leicester Blue Sox, Starbridge Titans, Worcester Sorcerers, Wolverhampton Wolves and the 2020 WMLB champions, the Telford Giants. Uh, They will also return into action on the 6th of June. The BBLs Northern Baseball League also returns for the 2021 season uh, after a majority of the teams missed out on the 2020 season due to the pandemic. 2021 will see the return of the 2019 AAA champions, the Liverpool Trojans, as they look to defend their title on the opening day in Liverpool against the newly promoted AA champions, the Manchester A's. <coughs> Go A's. Uh, whilst the 2019 runners-up, the Sheffield Bruins, will travel to the Cartmel Valley Lions. In the AA Central Division, we'll see the Liverpool Trojans, uh, the newly promoted Sheffield Blade Runners first team, and the Newcastle Nighthawks, who were the uh, 2019 single-A winners, and the reformed Durham Spartans. The British Baseball League single-A division will be made up of seven teams this year, with the Hull Scorpions, Manchester Bees, which may feature one little podcaster right here, the uh, Sheffield Blade Runners second team, and the rebranded Halton Trojans, and the debut of three teams from Sheffield in the form of the Sheffield Cubs, which is the Bruins developmental team, and also two more teams from the Blade Runners, the three and four team. And the great clubs of the Southwest Baseball East Championship will return on Sunday, the 16th of May, with seven teams the Bristol Bats, the Bristol Buccaneers, the Bristol Brunels, Cardiff Merlins, the Cornish Clay Cutters, Western Jets, and the Taunton Muskets, all competing for the single A Championship. And then the Triple A teams, the Bristol Badgers, BC Vetra, SW Rebeldies, and the newly introdu- uh, inducted Bournemouth Bears entering the national championships. And now we get on to the scores from the first weekend of May 2021. In the BBF's top division, the British Baseball Federation, the NBL, there has been uh, two new teams added, uh, the London Legends and the only Northern team in the NBL, the Lancashire Legends, who many will know as a team made up mainly of the GB youth athletes. And they'll be mixing it up with the league regulars, the London Mets, the London Capitals, the Essex Arrows and the Hearts. Falcons. The two legend teams faced each other in their league debuts and the Mets, uh, now led by the new head coach Rich Minford, uh, after Drew Spencer stepped down in September 2020 to take over as the GB national team manager. They faced the Capitals at Finsbury Park, which is the home of the Mets. The Essex Arrows shot over to Grove Hill Park to take on the Hearts Falcons. So let's have a look at some of those scores. 
Starting off with the London Mets versus the Capitals in game one. The Mets just edged out the Capital game, uh, Capitals with 11 runs to 10. But then the Capitals swept the Mets in game two with six runs to zero. The Lancaster Legends, however, took both games from the London Legends, 10-8 in the first game and 18-6 in the second game in the uh, Legends derby. Uh, 14-year-old Travis Harfield was the player of the day for Lancashire, going 8-10 over both games. Daniel Gonzalez and John Carter both hit home runs for the London Legends in what was a great day of baseball. Been told that the first game was extremely close, uh, right up until inning 6-7. Uh, when there was two runs in the second game, it was just a crazy uh, event overall. Lancashire Legends scored 12 runs in the first inning and they were out for the win right from the off. So let's fly on over now to the Hearts Falcons game against the Essex Arrows. And in game one, it was the Essex Baseball Club that took home the win with a 16 runs to 13 victory. And then game two was a closely fought contest, a very high scoring contest which the Essex Arrows edged out the Falcons 24 runs to 23. And uh, Jessica Vernon from the Southern Bells team, she made history on Sunday, being the first ever female pitcher to pitch in the NBL. And she was playing there for the Hearts Falcons. So congratulations, Jess. What a great achievement. So let's have a look now at the AAA South Division. With the East London Latin Boys hosting the London Mammoths in Walthamstow, the Essex Arrows AAA team uh, hosted the Essex Redbacks at Townmead Plainfields, and the London Marauders travelled to Williamsfield, the home of the Kent Buccaneers, for their doubleheaders as well. With six hours of glorious baseball, with the Latin Boys versus the Mammoths, Pepe Anderson's Latin Boys took home both games in a doubleheader, 12 runs to two. The Essex Arrows AAA team versus the Essex Redbacks, seeing the Redbacks sweep the Arrows eight runs to five in the opening game, and then 13 runs to six in the final game of that series. The Marauders versus the Kent Buccaneers, the Marauders split against the Bucks. Uh, game one went 15 to 14, and then game two was two to 14. So let's have a look at the AA Central Division. We had the Cambridge Monarchs taking on the Essex Archers at Coldham Common. The Norwich Iceni hosted the Milton Keynes Books at Hewitt School Park. The Oxford Kings were host to the Hearts Hawks at Horsepath. And again, those are double-headed games. Fortunately, at the time recording, I uh, wasn't able to find out the Cambridge Monarchs versus the Essex Archers score. But the Iceni versus the Books uh, saw the Books win both games of their double header with game one resulting in a high scoring 17 runs to 11 battle and game two going 15 runs to three in the double a contest there and the oxford kings versus the hearts falcons the kings end up ruling supreme over the hard battling hearts in their double header as game one went 14 runs to eight and game two ended 10 runs to eight moving on now to the double a southeast where we had the croydon pirates um, facing the Guildford Mavericks at the Roundshaw playing field. Richmond Dragons taking on the London Musketeers at Floodfield. The East London Latin Boys double-A team was facing the London Signwiders at Enfield playing field. And again, those were all double-headers too. So the Croydon Pirates versus the Guildford Mavericks. Uh, the Pirates managed to win the first game, seven runs to six in extra innings. But game two, in typical British fashion, was rained off. The Richmond Dragons versus the London Musketeers. Uh, seeing the Muskies taking both games, the double header and down there ended up 13 runs to three and then 21 runs to 10 in favour of the Muskies in what looked like a beautiful day for playing baseball. The Latin Boys versus the London Sidewinders. Uh, strung to find out the results for that as nothing's come through yet, but uh, I'll try and keep you informed on those as I find them out. The single A Central teams were in action over the course of the weekend as well with some games played, played on the Saturday at Finsbury Park and also a couple of games taking place on Sunday with the London Mustangs taking on the London Minotaurs at Finsbury Park on the third field and the London Mustangs, um, that was a double header on that Saturday. The Essex Redbacks on Sunday took on the Hearts Raptors at Forest Glade with the Hearts Londoners taking the Hearts Eagles at Basing Hill Ballpark. Again, double headers across the board. And that brings us now to the single A South Division with Bracknell Inferno facing off against the Richmond Dukes at the Westmoreland Drive 
uh, playing fields. The Brighton Jets um, were against the Brighton Brewers at Walter Hall playing fields. And the Guildford Millers were facing off against the Guildford Goldcats at Christ College. And here to tell us a bit more about the Bracknell Inferno versus the Richmond Dukes doubleheaders is Jack Ford Lane, the manager of the Bracknell Inferno. And joining me now from the Bracknell Inferno, the, the umpire of the game versus the Richmond Dukes is Jack Ford Lane, who is usually the manager of the Inferno. But uh, Jack, you took up umpiring duties yesterday. How did it go? Uh, I did, yeah. I think I only made one massive mess up, which is an improvement for me when I umpire. Um, uh, and, but the day was re- really nice day. Uh, it was it was nice to just watch some baseball. And I thought if I can umpire two games in a row, then anyone else on my team for the future weeks can do it now. Excellent. Set the example and raise a high bar. Uh, so how did the games go for you yesterday? Uh, for, for Bracknell, I think it was really strong hitting and pitching um, day. Uh, we had a lot of new players, but what was mostly impressive for us was our, our pitching because we've lost a lot of our main pitchers. We essentially had four new pitchers out there and they all did really, really well. Uh, it helps that they have played baseball uh, for quite a while. So they're used to the sport and they, they understand what they need to do. Um, but, of, but stepping on the mound is a, is a different thing. So as soon as you get on there, it can be quite daunting and, and be quite a mental um, game. But they, they did really well. And, and Richmond themselves is, were, were full of young new players as well. And I thought they did really well as the day went on. They had an inning where they got five runs in it. Um, and they they uh, had a few innings where they I think they limited Bracknell to zero runs, which was quite impressive. Um, but really good hitters. I think they must play cricket or something because they just had that natural ability to get that ball pinging off the bat. Excellent, cool stuff. And any sort of standout moments to you in either of the two games? Um, my favourite moment of the game which I don't think was a standout moment because it was just a load of mistakes all over the shop from both teams, was uh, we have the worst fences in the world that we put out to stop the ball. And usually if a ball hits the fence, it just goes through or knocks the fence over. But um, a ball to that was hit to second or shortstop was thrown to first, um, went past the first baseman and hit the fence, but stayed in. Uh, and the runner who didn't realise was... Um, on the left-hand side of the base. So, you know, technically it was still, because it looked like he was going towards second possibly. Um, so the ball was thrown back in and he got into a rundown to second. Uh, and that lasted for about 45 seconds of a rundown. <laughs> um, and then the the second base, I think it was, caught the ball, went to uh, tag him out and the ball flew out of his glove. Um, and then on the next one, the same player ran from second to third and the exact same thing happened there. So he got up and ran home. It was just a, it was just a, um, he should have been out on every base, but for some reason, it, everyone's were happening every, everywhere. That was my standout moment anyway. Got a little British baseball. It sounds like the Benny Hill theme music. Should yeah, it should have been. been. Yeah, I wish back. it was filmed. It would be so funny to watch back. Brilliant. All this stuff. Uh, Jack, thank you very much for your time. And I wish you for now, all the best of luck with the coming season. Thank you. And to round up this, this uh, weekend's action, we're going now to the single eight Southeast division where the South Coast Sea Dogs took on the South Coast Pirates at Claremont School. The Tombridge Bobcats uh, were playing against the Tombridge Wildcats at Borley Field, and those were double headers as well. And here to tell us a bit more about the game of the Tombridge Bobcats versus the Wildcats is the Bobcats captain, Niall Cafferty. And here to tell us more about the Tombridge Bobcats versus the Tombridge Wildcats is the captain of the Bobcats, Niall Cafferty. Niall, how are we? Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, glad that baseball's back, I think, like everyone else. Indeed. Uh, so give us a quick summary of the game. Uh, double head up to start off the year. It was good to have it into, uh, like within our own club, which is good because we had six new players last year. First game... It was unfortunately a 21-9 loss and second one was a 16-11 loss, but lots of positives to take from that with many new players and a good learning curve and a good platform to build on for the rest of the year. Excellent. Who were some of the standout players for you yesterday? Uh, well, the the main event was a home run from Ethan Simpson, a three-run home run in the second game uh, in only his second full year with the club. And yeah, just an absolute bomb to straight centre field. It was gone. All this stuff. Uh, any decent pitching that was on display? 
Uh, yeah, unusually, I think for single A, we did have a couple of scoreless innings, which is always uh, good to see on the scoreboard of the zero. Um, and we had a new battery playing in both games together, and they worked really well. Um, yeah. And I believe there's somebody special uh, in attendance watching the game? Yes, Mrs. Borley turned up uh, to watch as she normally does on most weekends when Tunbridge are at home, which is always great to see her. The uh, the mother of Tunbridge Baseball Club. Excellent stuff. Now, thank you very much for your time and I uh, wish you all the best luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, Matt. And that's it for this weekend's action. More to come next week. Again, if you want to come on and uh, tell us a bit more like Niall and Jack did about the weekend's action, just get in touch with me on social media or wherever you can find me. Um, email British Baseball Podcast at gmail.com. A uh, little one minute, two minute uh, interview we can do. We can set it up, do it over Zoom, and we can get your uh, team a bit of exposure. So please get in touch and don't just let me ramble on about random scores. Let me know all the action that came in, or even if you want to send me a message that I can read out for you, uh, like it was in the case of the Legends game, which looked like a thrilling contest. Just let me know the action, let me know the results, and I'll do the rest. And until next time, stay safe and take care. Ta-ra.